Hello everyone, welcome to the final installment of the Critical Reflection Syntheses. This week, we have three closing synthesizers, Elizabeth, Dan B., and Hei Un. These intrepid navigators of social and ethical rough waters will be analyzing and synthesizing Critical Reflection 8, which was all about giving voice. Will their voices be heard? Stay tuned to find out. Aloha! This week we took a deep dive into the racial and ethnic divides in educational technology by looking at specific examples illustrated in Alper's ethnographic study of the use of uh, assistive technologies for voice. And when reflecting on the intersection of these divides in the context of this study, we were tasked with choosing a quote from the author and answering two questions. The most popular keyword that was chosen uh, related to the concept of voice, with the cultural expression of voice being the biggest indicator of the effect of racial and ethnic division. Several of us chose quotes that related to how assistive technology related to and limited voices and explored that to various degrees. Next popular choice involved quotes that illustrated the limitations of technologies. We spoke to the pros and cons of the technology in this context. We looked at the issues of bias and tech design and explored the problems arising from a utopian view of technology. Several chose calls for action in their quotes. Shelby and Kirsten both chose ones that related to professional practices, while Kelly and Saul chose a call for a better listening to the people that the technology is supposed to serve. Mike and Judy chose examples from the ethnic graphic case studies themselves to look at specific instances of racial and ethnic divide. For the question of why each of us chose the quote that we did, most of it was for personal uh, reasons, either for family members or having ex our own experience of our own voice being limited, or, or as professionals in our capacities as uh, teachers, or purely for academic reasons, with the rationale of the choice being emblematic of our current theme. For the final question, the most directly referenced concept of was the uneven aspects of access to educational opportunities as illustrated by the fence metaphor. This was followed by references um, to problems of the digital divide and relational inequalities. Uh, the analysis of inputs, processes, and outputs were frequently referenced, as were the concepts of structural inequalities. Uh, a couple of us mentioned the cultural capital and that was introduced in the Alper chapters. And we we covered a, e even more, but um, we pretty much universally spoke to biases in technology in one form or another. Uh, and speaking of biases, I'll close with a little bit of a pet peeve related to an unspoken bias. For those who consistently referred to Alper in their talk as a he rather than the neutral they or just the author, here is an image of Alper from the author's website. Thanks for listening. Hi, everybody. Um, this is Dan Bulas's uh, synthesis of Critical Reflection 8 Giving Voice. Um, so themes that people are sorry, the quotes that people chose, I just sort of distilled them into what I call the gist of it. Uh, Allison and Elizabeth both looked at the quote on the tilting of the axis of power. Um, Candace looked at the voices evolve culturally and socially. Um, sensitivity of therapists and clinicians to families from different backgrounds. That was Shelby. Uh, iPad is a cultural object. Understanding children broadly. That was mine. Full expression of choice is more than AAC apps, hey Yun, prolo quo, quo to go, a better shot at communication, that was Judy. Um, figuring out how to listen, Kelly, being egalitarian and culturally sensitive to meet the needs of more, Kristen. Family ability, inability to support tech solutions at home, Mike. Non-speaking and minimally speaking, people always struggle to be heard in a democracy, Natalie. Cultural stereotypes of hearing and speech compound injustice, Samantha, and the promise of technology being not being fulfilled until we redefine listening through the experience of non-speaking people. And then children's family identities impacted by issues of voice. That was Tyler. Sorry, the other one was Saul. So overall themes that termed up equity and equality, I found it at least eight times, culture and language four times, System, systemic or designer bias, at least four people brought that up, new to culture and non-native speakers, two respondents, 
human communication emotion came up at least once. Limitations of technology four times. Technology literacy twice. Marginalized populations twice. Independence of the disabled came up once. Empowering people, three of you talked about it. Relating people, uh, relating to this issue through personal experience. There were actually five people. It was the second only to equity. And then listening, redefining listening, three respondents, how children use tools came up twice, supporting tech implementation, implementation, work, home, and school, four respondents, poverty, economic factors, digital divide, three respondents, and happy holidays, everyone. Thanks for watching. And thanks, Tyler, for the delicious pictures in your presentation. Hello everyone, it was great to see each of us choose a different quote. For my slideshow, I decided to show images of everyone's quotes to help you review. So as I talk, I'll click through our different quotes. That way you can pause the video at any time to read your class members quotes. Let's start the slideshow with a quote in random order. The images will not exactly match what I'm discussing. It looks like some of us do work with special education students and some of us have family members with a particular disability. I'll talk about common connections that I saw we made. Five of us discussed the baseball field and equity. By us was also a common connection. Five of us referred to that. So those were two most common connections. The next connection that four of us made us Van Dyke's digital divide. I could see how it was on many of our minds. Border firms of capital was also mentioned by three of us. Uh, our input processes and outcomes were referenced by three people. And Darling Hammer's ideas were talked about by three of us. It was an excellent opportunity to review the concepts that we have learned in this course. I also noticed there were many strong messages and good questions that were raised by our class members. For time concerns, I will mention just a few. For example, Elizabeth commented that it doesn't help us to understand what does or not get said. But what we need to consider is that relationship between tech design and the cultural structures, political economics, and societal realities. Christine discussed how an important part of equity is consulting with the people using the tech. She said it was a glaring omission of people who work with the students and the tech. We should not just focus on giving voice, but honoring voice. Brian asked, how many voices does technology have to have? How would you create an interface that allows you to create an identity? He, he commented that there are identities that we have and the identity that we might want. And so, uh, shared his experience of what it is to have or not have a voice when moving to a new country with a different language. Everyone did a great job reflecting on what we have learned so far in this course. It made me think how empowering students with the technology can happen. But as an educator, I have to see areas of support that are still needed and address it.